Hmm. You know, I'm a blank slate that someone can insert himself into. I have no discernible personality. You know what I should do? I should surround myself with thick, unattainable, heavily attractive women. Harem anime. It's a staple in the anime industry. Many harem anime have come and gone over the years. Hell, even Konosuba can be considered a harem anime because it's a guy surrounded by three attractive women. Today we're going to talk about one such anime, Quintessential Quintuplets. Quintessential Quintuplets centers around a character named Futuro Yasugi. Futuro Yasugi is a bookworm who's also a bit of an asshole. He only thinks about studying. He thinks that any other teenage endeavor is completely pointless. And to mend his heart, we have our female leads. What makes the females leads a little different is that they're all related. We're talking about identical quintuplets. The Nakano quintuplets. Ichika, Nino, Miku, Yotsuba, and Itsuki. Each of these girls has their pros and cons. All trying to fight for the affection of our lead, Fataro. And now welcome to the Hater's Guide for Quintessential Quintuplets. Here we go. The silent and reserved girl with a pessimistic way of thinking with low self-confidence, who often belittles herself. Oh, Miku's ways has gained the popularity amongst the fandom. Her sense of modesty and the fact she cares less about her appearance, giving her the advantage of she's all that 1990s vibe. Miku is perhaps the most popular of all the Nakano girls, especially amongst the fans. However, that unfortunately leads to her main problem. She's popular. In most of these harems, the most popular one usually never wins. They often come down very quickly. And unfortunately, that's Miku's biggest problem. And although she gains a lot of points being a history buff and the fact that she often leaves off some of the most cutest pouts you could ever see, Miku's chances of winning are unfortunately depressed. But that doesn't mean we can't like her. Ah yes, the calm and composed demeanor of the eldest sister. Although she has a fake smile at times, which Fudor sees right through, Ichika is a very formidable suitor here. I mean, she starts off as an obstacle only due to her pessimistic attitudes towards learning. She later takes an extreme liking towards Fudoro. She often has very smug expression and a very teasing behavior. However, she becomes very flushed when romantic moments seem to happen. In terms of the waifu meter, she ranks very high. Let's see her voice actress. Oh boy, that's a big name. Kanahazawa characters are often very high in the waifu area, and this person seems to be very formidable and possibly the bride. Here we have the active, cheerful, and easygoing girl, aka the Genki girl, the one that always loses the harem races. Yeah, Yotsuba daily does nothing to really endure herself to Futuro. There's no question, she's bound to go to the bottom of the list. She does harbor an inferiority complex to her sisters, however, she's always very cheerful, which wears down on an MC. Needless to say, she's going to lose this one. I think she's going for the first pick in the next harem draft. Hey, I heard Trevor Lawrence is going to be the number one pick. Is Yotsuba going for that? Uh. 
I have elected to interrupt this video to provide the spoiler. In the manga, there is a plot twist entailing Yotsuba's past that completely modifies this character's outlook, transforming her into a formidable contender for Lis Ojai's heart. Now back to the review. Here we go, the Sundere. As we all know, the Sundere has a 60% chance of winning a harem. So let's take a look at this one. Nino is the most outgoing of the quintuplets. She has a very sharp tongue and talks very bluntly and very honestly. However, she's also the rebel of the group. Interestingly enough though, she also acts like the mom. She takes great pride in the fact she cooks for her sisters. So if you love food, this is the person you're probably most interested in. She also carries band-aids just in case her sisters get hurt. She's very caring. So let's see some of her negatives. Let's see her. When she first met Futuro, she poisoned him. Wow, that's a uh, big problem here in trying to win. Almost basically sabotaging your chances right at the beginning. I wonder if we can get a better Sundere. Well, I'm calling it right now. Here's your winner. There's no point in looking at the other sisters. She's won. Other than the fact that Ichigi's a Sundere, she's also first girl. And as we know, first girl has a 90% chance of winning a harem. Her positive attributes make her look like the murderer's row of harem contestants. She's awkward. She's a bit on the frumpy side. She's often stubborn. She also easily gets scared. Itsuki is also the person that loves to eat food quite a bit. However, she never seems to gain any significant weight. Some downsides about her is the fact that she's a perfectionist. She'd rather cross out and leave an answer blank than give a wrong answer. She also has a bad sense of direction. However, because of her sundere ways, these factors are often overlooked and will mend Futuro's heart. So let's look at her voice actress. Oh no, no, not a Nori, not again. I'm getting ReZero episode 18 flashbacks. Please don't do this to me, Futuro. Don't do it. No! Well now. Futuro Yusugi is going to have to make a very hard decision. Each of these five female leads deserves his affection. And he will have to take close consideration before he chooses one. Now we're coming into season two. So we will now learn more of what's going to happen for him to make his decision. You know, it's not like the manga concluded last February 2020. We now know who the bride is. You know, it's not like you can't go to Barnes & Nobles or a digital online provider to find out and look into the manga. Anyway, it's time for us to watch season two. And until next time, Bye. You made me go to a wedding.